India tiene el uso de la palabra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for giving me the floor. My delegation thanks the Secretary General for his reports and all the other reports presented under these agenda items dealing with racial discrimination and right of people to self-determination. Mr. Chairman, despite efforts made in combating racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerances, these pernicious ills continue to persist in different forms and manifestations today. Expressions of racial prejudices are increasingly intertwined with other forms of discrimination, constituting violation and abuse of human rights. Rise of exclusionist ideologies inciting discrimination and violence threaten to subvert the globalized economic order and social cohesion. We need comprehensive legal and administrative responses to counter emerging challenges. We must hold the perpetrators accountable, build awareness among people, train law enforcement officials, and monitor and review efficacy of various measures. Poverty and economic disparities are closely associated with racial discriminations and related intolerances and contribute to the persistence of these regressive attitudes and practices, which in turn generate more poverty. Complementary domestic action and international cooperation is necessary to effectively implement the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination and the Durban Declaration and Program of Action to realize inclusive growth envisaged in 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to leave no one behind. Mr. Chairman, we share the concern regarding alarming rise in the use of digital space for dissemination of racist and xenophobic materials, as well as for recruitment, networking, and fundraising by groups espousing these ideologies. Transboundary nature of the problem requires strong international cooperation involving all stakeholders. We must acknowledge that racial equality and freedom of expression need not be pursued in a zero-sum manner. Private entities, including conventional and social media and civil society, need to develop and observe codes of conduct that embody commitment to the racial equality and non-discrimination. Immunities enjoyed by the social media platforms for contents by users must be counterbalanced with responsible content moderation and norms for removing objectionable contents on a voluntary basis. Mr. Chairman, India has long been a multi-religious, multi-ethnic, multilingual society based on principles of peaceful coexistence and tolerance. Our constitution upholds the principle of equality and expressly prohibits discrimination on account of race. These constitutional provisions are embodied in our legal framework, including criminal law, and are safeguarded by judiciary, human rights institutions, and civil society and media. Mr. Chairman, self-determination has long been recognized as the right of peoples of non-self-governing colonies and trust territories to independence and self-government. India has always been at the forefront of the struggle against colonialism since its independence seven decades ago. There are still 17 non-self-governing territories which are in various stages of decolonization. We must step up efforts to reach, reach the conclusion of this long-drawn process. Palestine remains the unfinished task in the realization of the right of people to self-determination. Demonstrating India's commitment to the cause of people of Palestine, India has substantially scaled up bilateral development partnerships and has also increased contribution to UNRWA. Mr. Chairman, we reject the unwarranted reference made by one delegation to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which is an integral part of India. It has become a habit of this delegation to misuse any forum for narrow political gains. In reality, it is the people of India, as well as people from our region and beyond, have to suffer most egregious violation of human rights inflicted by terrorism emanating from beyond our borders. The right to self-determination cannot be abused or misrepresented with the aim of undermining the sovereignty and territorial integrity of a member state. Mr. Chairman, in conclusion, I would say collective and coordinated action at the international, national, and local level is essential and must be vigorously pursued to promote and preserve equality and non-discrimination, which are fundamental to our existence. India remains committed to work with all partners in this pursuit. I thank you, Mr. Chairman.